Welcome back to our series on Christians and social justice. In our last episode, we tackled the question, should Christians protest for justice? And concluded that our role as witnesses of Christ's love, justice and truth is crucial. Today, we explore a deeper question. Under what circumstances would Christians be involved in a protest? And how can we effectively participate while maintaining our faith and witness? Social justice protests have become a significant part of our global culture. Historically, protests have inspired positive social change and improved human rights protections. Many argue that protests play a vital role in civil, political, economic, social and cultural life. But what about biblically? Are there circumstances under which the Bible provides for Christians to protest injustice? This is a dilemma many Bible believers face. Have you ever contemplated leading a social justice protest as a Christian? As a young man, I found myself involved in protests against perceived injustices. Even today, there are many things in my society and Christian community that act me so much that I contemplate protesting. I am sure many Christians feel the same way. In a recent conversation, someone cited Jesus' cleansing of the temple recorded in the Gospels of Mark, Luke and John. For those unfamiliar, Jesus overturned the tables of those selling and buying in the temple, accusing them of turning the house of prayer into a den of thieves. This story might appeal to those desiring to show power in protesting. However, these verses should not be used as a basis for Christians to engage in violent protests. In these texts, we see that Jesus is the Lord of the temple. The temple was his father's house. In turning the tables, he was fulfilling scripture. The zeal for your house consumes me. Protests are not alien to Christians. The Bible and contemporary history show that Christianity and the preaching of the gospel have often uh, faced protests. In fact, within Christian circles, we have what is called Protestantism or the Protestant Reformation. We need not to go too far to find examples of people who stood up for the truth and attracted to themselves vehement resistance. Martin Luther and Martin Luther King Jr. stand out among those who led great revolutions in both the Christian and political circles. Everywhere the gospel has been preached, it has faced opposition. Christ himself was protested even when he committed no injustice. Let's look at some biblical examples. In Luke chapter 9, verse 51 to 56, Jesus is rejected by the Samaritan town. His disciples, wanting to call down fire upon the town, are rebuked by Jesus. He teaches them a lesson on responding to opposition, a lesson for our Christian response to protests. In Acts chapter 19, verse 21 to 41, Apostle Paul faces a riot in Ephesus incited by a silversmith named Demetrius. The whole city is in an uproar, even though many didn't know why they were there. Apostle Paul urges the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians 6, 3 to 10, to be commendable in every way, enduring hardships and responding with purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, and genuine love. Even when treated as impositors, yet they are true. This is our admonishment as Christians. After such events, what can we do for justice? Our role is to speak out. Point people to the truth of God's word. We can speak out with righteous anger, sharing God's truth, spreading love, showing compassion, 
and supporting causes that promote righteousness. We can contact our member of parliament to speak to the legislations that contradict Christian values. We can engage with our local, regional, and state police departments. Above all, the greatest protest any Christian must engage in is that of prayer. We should pray through every challenge and every hopeful day. Petition God. Yes, I said petition God. Before you write petitions to your parliament, let the heavens know. Let your cry come before the highest court, before you petition earthly authorities. Let's not be silent in our communities or in our prayers. Based on the Bible, the only circumstance under which Christians may protest is when the word of God is violated. We are called to submit to God and the counsel of his word. Anything that turns us away from our Christian convictions must be resisted. Christians must use every legal means to uphold righteousness. Our responsibility is to love God, love people, and exalt Christ. Thank you for joining us in this episode. Remember, our actions should always reflect Christ's love and truth. Stay tuned in our next episode where we will continue to explore the role of Christians in social justice. Until then, may God guide and bless your efforts in seeking justice and peace. I am Robert. Stay blessed and keep shining the light of Christ. Bye-bye.